Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arato samma sambuddhase Today we are going to talk about the monk's bowl. Today I just went uh, for alms round in the village and I, I thought it would be useful to teach you a little bit about the monk's bowl, what it is, some of the rules we have, and how important it is uh, for us to have a bowl, and, and why we have some allowances when we lose our bowl or our, lo or, or our bowl is broken. So I have with me my bowl right here. And uh, this is uh, like a, this is called the Tavika in Sri Lanka. And it is a, uh, like a shoulder, it's a bowl bag and we have a shoulder strap for it. Now I have a seat belt. <laughs> This is a seatbelt, actually, uh, from a junk car. And it actually makes a very nice, uh, a very nice shoulder strap for the bowl. The seatbelts are, are designed to be very comfortable over long periods of time. And the seatbelt as a bowl strap or a shoulder strap is also quite comfortable as well. Normally we, we cover this with, with cloth, uh, but since I was the, one of the main donors of a bunch of seatbelts, uh, I was able to choose the red color that was pure. Normally they're like blue or yellow. There's only a few different uh, standard colors for the seatbelt that we can find. And what red is a rare one. And normally we cover it with, with uh, the the robe cloth. We have some old robes and we can uh, make sort of a sleeve to go over the seat belt. This here, let me take it out actually. So this is a bowl bag, we could call it. We call this a tavika and it's connected to a bowl ring, and so the Buddha allowed a, a bowl ring and we're supposed to use it to rest the bowl. Normally in Thailand they have very long ones, and I, I should have brought one here, but I don't have it, but I'm sure you can see them in monk pictures. But actually just a ring is fine, and I happen to have found this on the road, and it's actually a hose clamp. I don't know if you can see that, maybe I'll zoom in. And so this is just a hose clamp that I use as a ring. Sometimes in Sri Lanka, people get creative and they, they use different wasted parts or parts that are from maybe broken flasks or something like that. And they'll, they'll use that as a, as a bowl ring. So we have like a, a cover or a bowl bag. We have the shoulder strap and then we have the, the bowl ring. What's nice about this is because it's a hose clamp, I can disconnect it. I can uh, take this all apart and I can wash my bowl cover if I want to. The bowl is black. This is a stainless steel bowl and it has a a unique shape to it uh, that makes it a monk's bowl. The reason why it's black instead of a silver stainless steel color is because iron bowls need to be fired, need to be sort of blackened or blacksmithed uh, five times. And because stainless steel is made allowable because it has iron in it, according to the modern, what we call 
great standards. When the Buddha says that something that is not mentioned as allowable, that should be allowable, uh, then we can, we can uh, basically say that it is allowable. Normally the Buddha said uh, iron bowls and clay bowls. Now clay bowls, <laughs> clay bowls uh, were very popular during the time of the Buddha, but uh, there's one problem, they, they break a lot, <laughs> they break very easily. I've heard in um, Amaravati, when they have a new monk, they, they have him use a clay bowl to understand why we have so many rules concerning the bowl. And we have a lot of rules, like for instance, you're not allowed to open a door while holding your bowl at the same time, even if you can hold it with one hand. That's not allowed. The reason is because it can, it can drop. We can also, we can't put this on our lap and, and eat with it. But we're, we're allowed to, if it's on our hand while we're eating, we can do that. The reason is people were eating uh, with the bowl on their lap and uh, they decided to get up and uh, the, the bowl fell on the floor and it broke. So maybe you had your napkin on your lap before and you've gotten up before and the, the napkin dropped uh, onto the floor when you got up. I'm, I'm sure you probably have had that happen to you. Uh, and uh, that uh, does actually happen with bowls. And uh, sometimes I've, I've seen it probably in, in 23 years, I've, I've seen it maybe three or four times. And the bowl goes, whoosh, 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 goes all the way across the, the, the eating hall. So I've seen it happen before, especially in Sri Lanka, because we eat with the bowl on our lap, but it should be under the hand. And so that's a, so we have a lot of rules about um, how to care for the bowl. Uh, when, we, when we're finished eating, we have to dry it. We have to put it in the sun. We have to um, dry it in the sun. We have to wipe it first so there's no water in the, in the bowl. And then we have to uh, dry it in the sun. Not only that, we can't like walk away and leave it in, leave it in the sun and walk away and then come back, uh, you know, an hour later. It's, it just takes a few minutes to, to become, to become uh, warm. And then when it's warm and you can rub your finger inside the, the middle of it, in, inside the, the bowl, and if it doesn't leave a mark, then that means it's dry. And so we don't want this to rust. And so one of the things that we do is we blacken it. We, we, we take sesame seed oil. This is not paint. We take sesame seed oil and we treat the sesame seed oil ahead of time. And so we actually cook it, I think, to half the volume. You know how you like cook a stew or a curry and you can uh, let it simmer for a long time and then uh, the volume of it will, will drop? Uh, in the same way, <laughs> I didn't know you could do this, but you can do that with oil. And the uh, oil becomes thicker so that when you smear it on, on the bowl, uh, it doesn't, uh, how do you say, like ooze or, I don't know how to ex explain it. So like when I did mine in, when I was living in Hawaii, I did mine in Hawaii and I didn't cook down the oil enough. And uh, so then my, my coating was not smooth and I had like streak marks and it was, it was not smooth like it is here. And I redid this bowl uh, so many times. This bowl, although it looks very, very new, um, I, think, I think it's actually from 2011. So it, it was fired uh, so many times because once, every so often, the, uh, after so many years, it starts getting like a chip and, and scrape, mark, sc scrape marks from the from the metal cover that I have here. And so when you put it on, you know, it's metal on metal and it'll, uh, it, it'll start to wear away. This is fairly new. The, the blackening is, is fairly new. And so you bake it in an oven, like a, we have a makeshift oven. I'll see if I can put a picture uh, 
in this video, maybe while I'm talking. And so what we do is we have like a plate. We have like a metal plate. And then we have a big, a big pot, you know, like a big, big pasta pot. It's about, you know, this, this tall. And, it, and what we do is we under the, we put the plate over the fire and then it heats up the plate and then we put the bowl, usually upside down, prop, propped with um, like little pieces and to, to let it uh, not be touching the plate, the hot plate. And then we'll take that big uh, pasta pot, we, we'll put it upside down and cover it. So I'll show you a picture uh, in this video to show you what that uh, contraption looks like. And we bake it, we, we smear it with oil, we bake it, it takes about five minutes. If we, have the, if we have the fire hot enough, it takes about five minutes. And what we do is we take some of the ash from the fire and we smear it, we sort of put a little bit on the, on the back of the bowl and then we'll blow it off. And then if it sticks to the, to the bowl, that means it's not yet ready cooking. And so we have to put it in for a few more minutes, maybe even five more minutes. And um, that's, uh, that's what we do. We do that five times. And that is called burning or blackening the bowl. And what happens is this will become very smooth and it will resist water. When you're finished washing it, you can, you can let out all the water. And because it's sort of blackened oil, it doesn't really stick so much. So it's easy to dry and it helps protect it. And also because it's an oil coating, it also prevents it from rusting. So even though, it, they don't, even though it's stainless steel, we don't uh, really, uh, you might think we don't need to really treat it as, as a, um, you know, for rust proofing. But stainless steel does rust and you have to be careful about it. And so in Thailand, they actually don't do this. They say it's not, ne it's not necessary. And so most of the monks in Thailand and the Thai derivatives, they don't blacken their bowl. So um, that's, uh, uh, that's about the blackening of the, the bowl and treating the bowl. One of the things that we do also is we cut off this lip here. This, uh, it's actually like a, it's folded over and it makes a double layer. But the problem is that uh, it can collect food. It can collect food inside that uh, seam. And, and uh, it's not uh, sanitary. And we have a problem when we have consume oil, if we have oily food, uh, and we have like a drop of oil uh, that uh, is from yesterday or a week ago or a month ago, you know, that's caught in that, uh, that fold, then uh, this is a problem for the monks of Vinaya. It makes, makes monks worry. And so what we do is we, we cut it off. And I remember when we, we cut off all the, all the tops of the bowls, there was one monk at Paul Ock. And he was uh, maybe some welder or metal worker or something like that. And he, he cut off his bowl. And I wanted to do that. And I was eating with Venerable U Kondandana when I was a very young monk. And it was really funny. I said, oh, I want to do that. And he says, no, 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 it'll make your bowl weaker. That's why they fold it over to make it stronger. And so after some time, a few more monks did it. And <laughs> eventually <laughs> U Kondandana also did it. And then I got to do it as well. And he's a Saida U Kondandana now. And... Uh, uh, I used to eat with him uh, every, almost every day for the first few years uh, that I was a monk. And I also ate with Urewata uh, nearly every day as well. And uh, he was one, also one of the monks who, who did that. And now it's quite standard to cut off the top. So another thing that we do, another thing that we do is, that's special for usually Paak monks is we put a little ring on the bottom. This is actually welded. This is welded, we take some uh, stainless steel and we spot weld it. Usually we have someone else do it. 
And uh, what that does is, uh, it, with this ring, it emulates the old, the, the old style Burmese bowls, which have the, I don't know if the lightings can show this, but the, um, the top fits and locks in place. And so that's uh, very useful when we go for alms, especially in the monastery, and especially if they are, um, the way we get our food is by donors uh, dishing out food, almost like in a, in a soup kitchen or a soup line. Um, what they do is they, we just go in a line and they just have a measured amount of food and they put it in the bowl. And, and when we get to um, the end of the line, we start getting you know, cakes and ice cream and stuff like that. And so there can be a lot of extra food, food that we cannot possibly eat. And so what we do is we, we can put it in the cover and it doesn't get spoiled from the curries and rice. And so uh, it's, it's very useful because then what we can do is we can take the treats that we don't, that we don't want we don't feel are, is useful for us, and then we can put them uh, on a table, uh, and other people can take them, or maybe the senior monks get the treats and the junior monks don't. And uh, at the end of the day, you can see the table, and a lot of it's a lot of it's already gone. And uh, also, the helpers might not get any food, so or the yogis might not get the um, the extra special food, and so we can we can do that. And it's very easy to carry and put your stuff there. And sometimes you might not want uh, some other food uh, mixing with the interior of the bowl, which has hot rice and curries in it. For instance, um, bananas, might, you might not want them uh, inside the, the food if they're not wrapped in plastic bags or something like that. But uh, for the most part, when I go for alms, uh, especially in Sri Lanka, I just put everything in the center of my bowl. Sometimes people, uh, uh, sometimes people in, in America, they, they're like, can I use my hands? I'm like, it's no problem. You know, I've gone for Pindapata in, in, uh, in Asia before, so it's, it's no problem at all for them to use their hands. And so that is uh, the bowl. Um, my bowl in particular is an eight-inch bowl. And uh, you can see the, the size. And this is a, a normal size bowl for uh, Myanmar, especially. In uh, Thailand, they go up to nine inches, maybe even bigger than that. And usually the, the junior monk has bigger bowls, and the senior monk has, the senior monk has uh, smaller bowls. And the, I guess the um, justification for that is the you know, it might be heavy for the senior monk to carry, and so, uh, um, or the, uh, this, the junior monk is at the end of the line, and so they have like a, they have a plate that they're dishing things out, and when they're, they see the last monk, they might want to take the whole plate and push it, um, put it into the monk's bowl, so that they might have determined that they're going to uh, give a whole amount of rice to, uh, to the group of monks. And then uh, when the last monk goes, then they you know, just empty uh, the plate that they had. Uh, today, <laughs> today, as a matter of fact, I had, to, I had a lot of food because um, uh, I was alone. And normally I have two monks with me. And one of the ladies determined that she was going to do the whole plate. And when she does that, it's very difficult to stop her. Like, usually if they do spoon by spoon, we can stop her. But when they start, you know, taking the whole plate and, and just scraping it into your bowl, uh, there's nothing really we can do about that. And so um, this, this bowl is quite old. I said that before. I think I've gotten this at two, 2011. My, my brother got this, actually, in Thailand for me. And he was, he was coming... He was coming to visit me in Sri Lanka, and I had asked him for a bowl lid, you know, one of these, because my bowl didn't have a lid because there was there was a little bit of doubt about there was a little bit of doubt about whether a bowl lid can be released for uh, personal use once it's donated to sangha. 
So I wanted to get a bowl lid because my brother was in Thailand. And what happened was he actually, um, he bought me a, a, a lid and then he told me that he bought me a bowl as well. And what he did was he bought me a nine inch bowl and he said, they look a little big, but I was told that they're, they're good. And I said, oh, well, uh, if you're going to get me a bowl, uh, I really need an eight inch if you want me to use it. The, the nine inch is a little too big. And there was a little bit of a resistance, but my, my brother did go all the way back to the store and exchanged it for an eight inch bowl. And, uh, and it took him a long time to get to do that. I think he told me about four hours. And uh, he got me this bowl. And uh, because it's the right size bowl, I'm able to use this uh, now well over 10 years. So uh, I've had opportunities to, to replace this bowl. And uh, because there was so much trouble for my brother to get this for me, and uh, so I decided that uh, I, would, uh, I accepted the other bowl when they gave it to us. And, uh, and then I, uh, I gave it away. I forget who I gave it to. Now at that time, stainless steel bowls were very difficult to come by, to come across. And uh, these the Thai bowls are usually the best. Uh, in Sri Lanka, we all have Thai bowls. And, and in, uh, in Pa'ak, uh, at that time, it was very difficult to get a Thai bowl. And so it was a very nice dana uh, that someone made. They, they donated, uh, oh, I think over 100 bowls, maybe 150 bowls. Not only that, they, they made custom bowl bags and they made custom, uh, they, they blackened them, which takes a long time to do. And uh, we accepted them in 2012, I remember. 2012, 2013, sometime around that time. There was a Thai donor and they wanted to donate a bunch of bowls. And before that, it was very difficult to get a bowl. And, and that sort of helped uh, the floodgates uh, for people who wanted a Thai bowl to, uh, to get a Thai bowl. And so that was, that was, really, that was really good that we were uh, given these. But I kept, I kept the, the bowl my brother got and it's been very useful. It's a bow tree, a bow tree bowl. It's a very high quality bowl. It's quite, it's quite a little. It's it's quite thick in the gauge, uh, but it does it does last. Um, and they can break. Uh, one one monk uh, had his bowl broken. Uh, they can. It depends on on how it is and how much how much steel content it is. It can become brittle. And so. Um, I've heard of a monk, I've never seen a, a, bowl, a broken bowl, but I've heard about it. Uh, so one monk here uh, lost his bowl, it broke. And I heard about a bowl breaking um, a long time ago, maybe 15, no, more than 15 years, maybe 18 <laughs> years ago, uh, I heard about a, another monk's bowl breaking. So Thai bowls last a long time. And so, um, and I got a lid for my other bowl as well. So there's some doubt about um, uh, the lids. Some people say it's resolved. Some people <laughs> say it's not resolved. Uh, about the lids being, once they're donated to Sangha, whether they can be relinquished, uh, sorry, distributed for personal use. So the bowl itself is, is very clear. It can be distributed. But the bowl stand, it comes with a bowl stand, and it comes with a lid. Uh, these, these are doubted because it's listed as what they call a garubanda. A garubanda is a heavy, heavy item, a heavy good. And uh, because uh, it's, it's listed as a, as a garubanda, then uh, some people have doubt about whether it is allowed. But there, there is an allowance for things that are meant to be carried upon your personal items. And so some a lot of monks, maybe the majority of monks, they're, they're okay with that. But Paul Oxido was very strict about it early on, and I grew up in that community, and I've seen uh, hundreds of bowl covers just in storage that can't get used, uh, hundreds of bowls um, that can't get used. They, they used to um, uh, hammer them down, I think, and make a, a concrete mixing things with them. And the bowl, the bowl lids, no one ever couldn't really do much of it with those. So 
so it's uh, good if you want to, uh, if you have a person you want to, uh, if you have a monk in mind or a person in mind who's going to ordain, it's, it's best actually, because it's meant for a person, it's best to donate it's best to donate the bowl to that monk directly rather than a sangha donation. Now, sangha donation is always top. And uh, even if it doesn't get used or monks are s scrupulous about uh, using uh, maybe the lid or the, um, or the, bowl, uh, the bowl stand, uh, we can find bowl stands. You know, for instance, this, this bowl ring here is something I found on the road. You can get hose clamps very easily. And uh, so that is, is best. But if you have a person that you, a person or a monk, uh, someone who's ordaining, I, I usually recommend people um, so that there's no doubt to, to donate directly to, to the monk. And uh, as a, what we call a publica dana, so individual dana. And so that's also uh, very, uh, very useful uh, if it's donated that way. You can also donate to Sangha, and then it gets frozen until we have a meeting, an official meeting, and then we uh, allow it to be used for individual use by anyone who needs it from, let's say, the storeroom. And so that's one of the, one of the things that we can do. We're very strict on the, um, on the distribution of goods, and for instance, if someone donates a computer, we cannot have a meeting and say, okay, well, this is good for uh, such and such monk, and we want to allocate it to him as his own personal property. Um, we have very strict rules, and once something is labeled as a heavy good or an expensive good, we're not allowed to reallocate it for someone else individually. So we have rules about that, and uh, the heavy goods are not able to be done that, uh, that way. What else do we have about the bowl? The bowl is very important. The bowl is very, very important. No bowl, no eat. You, you cannot get your food. Uh, you cannot go to the village. And you cannot get your food. And so uh, if your bowl gets broken, lost, or stolen, or it's beyond repair, uh, we have uh, things called the five patch rule. So if you have uh, five patches uh, in, your, uh, in your bowl uh, and it cannot be patched any further or something like that, forget the details about it. But uh, if, it's, uh, if it's beyond repair and uh, it's not smooth uh, then, and there's problems with keeping it together, then you're allowed to ask for another bowl. And uh, without even an invitation, you're allowed to ask for another bowl. If it gets lost or stolen, you can ask for another bowl. You can ask anyone. You can ask, you can ask like, I hate to say it, like a beggar. You can ask anyone. Normally, we cannot ask for anything unless we have an invitation. So for an invitation uh, to be valid, the, the the layperson has to basically know the monk or meet the monk, and he usually says, or by a messenger, he says, you know, if there's anything you need, please let me know. At that time, the monk can go to that person if his bowl is, uh, for any reason actually, he can ask for a new bowl, he can ask for uh, a bowl bag, he can ask for robes, he can ask for medicine, etc. Uh, he, can, he can ask for anything from that person because the invitation is if you need anything, if you ever need anything, please let me know. Ever means ever, like it, it doesn't expire. And uh, please let me, anything means uh, the, the type of invitation. And let me know. So this is an invitation for anything, for any time, as long as the faith and the, the relationship is, is kept well. Uh, then that, that monk can ask for anything he needs. And it was, it's most appropriate to, to go to someone who has given that type of invitation. Or sometimes they say, if you need anything, having the value of uh, $100, please let us know. Uh, if, you, if you need anything in, during the 
um, during the rainy season of such and such year, you know, or this year, this upcoming rainy season, then uh, you're allowed to ask uh, up until that time. So you have to be careful if you put limitations or unconsciously put limitations on it. So then the uh, invitation time gets a, a expired. Or if there's a limitation of value, over time that value can get used up and then you can, uh, you'll find that the monk doesn't ask you for anything anymore. And so, uh, but it's very important that, uh, that we don't ask for things from people who have not invited us. So the only thing we can do to get things we need is with our bowl. So we can go and we can, we have a whole protocol of, of how we go for, for alms and, um, and so we have, to be, we have to be silent while we go and we have to be like a, a bee that gathers the nectar from the, the flowers without harming it, without destroying it and it flies away. In the same way, that's how we should go to the village. That's how a monk should go into the village. This is from the Dhammapada. It's not even, <laughs> it's not even a vineyard rule, uh, but, it's, uh, but it is. It's like, it's, it's the direct teaching from the Buddha. And so when we have our bowl, we can actually, we can, we can get things that we need. One of the ways that we would get things that we need with our bowl, besides food, is we go pindapata at night. So, uh, in a Buddhist country, you don't go pindapata at night, okay? Something's wrong, something's strange. And so you go pindapata in the village at night and they say, um, uh, they try to give you food because they don't know what's going on or they'll ask you, what, what's going on? What do you need? And, uh, and so when they ask you, what do you need? Ah, then that's an invitation. And so that's how, that's how monks are actually able to build kutis. So we have rules uh, about begging for kutis. It's a very serious rule. It's a heavy rule. And uh, if, you, if you beg for the materials to build a kuti, that's a, a dwelling, like a hut, a meditation hut, and uh, you, you don't follow other protocol, then uh, that is how you can break that rule if you go beyond a certain size because you're begging. But normally uh, the, the kutis are are built by um, one's own donor, someone who's invited them, someone who's able to do it. Usually someone, you know, suggests they, they want to uh, build a kuti because um, it's very expensive. And uh, so, uh, so, so anyways, yeah, usually you don't ask, you know, like, can, can you build me a kuti? <laughs> usually the, the donor usually comes uh, directly for that. Or someone might ask a family member. So family members, are automatically the um, invited, their lifetime invited people. So, like, I can ask my brother for anything I need, like a bowl. Even if I had another bowl, I'm allowed to do that because he's my brother. And we're allowed to go uh, up and down from uh, seven generations. And uh, uh, I think I forgot. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's my generation is first. Um, or the parents' generation, I, I can't remember. But uh, for sure, six generations up and down is for sure. Uh, and and you, you probably won't have more than that. So, uh, but, but they can, the tree, the family tree, expands. And so like your cousins and whatever that, are, that carry the bloodlines, you're allowed to uh, ask for things as well without the invitation, but you still have to pay attention to the the faith and the willingness and, and, you have, and their means. You don't go beyond that. And so uh, if the bowl breaks, it's very important. It's very, very important. And so you're able to uh, actually just ask anyone for a bowl, a replacement bowl, if your bowl is broken. If you ask anyone for a bowl and you have a bowl that's not within the... Uh, you know, it's, it's still good, it doesn't have a, it's not broken in, in any way. Um, there's a whole procedure that we have where you have to relinquish the bowl and uh, everyone takes, everyone in the meeting, in, in the Sangha, in the Sangha meeting, they take, uh, one by one, they take the better bowl and what's, le they, like, 
you know, the, the first monk might say, okay, this is a better bowl than my bowl, and then he, he'll swap it, and then his bowl will go down the line, and another monk might say, oh, this bowl is better than my bowl, and then he'll swap it, and it goes like that for how many monks there are, and then the last bowl goes back to the original monk who asked for a bowl without, without needing it, without a dire need, and, uh, and without uh, any, you know, problems with the bowl, and so he just asked for another bowl. Um, but uh, this is from someone who has not invited him. But if the bowl is broken, uh, legitimately broken, and uh, it's beyond repair, or it's lost or stolen, uh, then you're able to, to do that, because it's very important. And uh, one time I was in Hawaii, and it was one of the first people who gave me food. Or uh, I remember there was, there was a, a hurricane there was a hurricane uh, on the island, and there was supposed to be a hurricane, but it sort of, you know, went to, went off uh, in the ocean, and it missed, it missed the island. But they can be very fierce uh, hurricanes if they hit hit the land, or hit the island. And uh, one of the ladies was was looking on the. I was going Pindapata on that day, and there was a lot of rain. And uh, she was, she happened to be, this lady happened to be looking outside, looking at the weather, because, you know, when there's a big storm, you're looking outside. And a lot of people didn't know um, that I was walking in the streets of, of Hawaii, Kauai, Hawaii. And uh, she says, she says to me, what are you doing out in the hurricane? And I said, well, uh, through, I was making fun of the, the mailman creed, and they say through rain, sleet or snow, they must deliver the mail. I said, through rain, sleet or snow, or maybe hurricanes, I said, I need to go because I can't get uh, any food otherwise. And, and she says, oh, you, you're looking for food. And she's seen me a few times, but she thought I was just blessing houses with loving kindness. And, and uh, she ended up giving me food. And then later on, she ended up waiting for me all the time. And uh, I think, yeah, she, she cried when I left. I told her I'm going to be leaving. And she used to wait for me. And, then, um, and she, used to, she was like a, like a grandma, or we say auntie uh, in Hawaii. She was like an auntie to me. And, uh, and because we, we need to go out and we need to get our food. And this is the way we get our food. And so it's, it's a very important requisite that the monks are uh, allowed to have. We have eight requisites. And uh, uh, we have the robes, we have three robes, we have the belt, we have the needle case, etc. And one of those is the, the bowl. And it's very important. And I've been going for alms, and I've been collecting my food. I have many, uh, many stories about when I've collected uh, food, went for alms. And it all starts with this. When, if you have the bowl, then you have the means to eat or even collect other things like oil for, usually if you, went, if you went at night, you could collect oil, oil for light. So we take that, um, you, could, you could put oil in your bowl. You could put oil in your bowl, and, and uh, um, oil for consuming is good for seven days, but uh, normally we would use it uh, for oil lamps. And so that's another thing that someone might go for alms at night. So I think I covered uh, quite a quite a bit. We just had a test actually on on the bowl and uh, many many things, mostly about all the different types of bowl stands and how to put them uh, down on the ground. And we have lots of lots of rules for the the bowls because we don't want them to get damaged. And especially at the time of the Buddha, the uh, the steel bowls, the iron bowls, were uh, difficult to come by. And of course, earthen bowls are more common. So we have lots of rules to protect the bowl. Now, when, when I travel, I have to take this with me. And it's, it's very important. I don't want to leave this anywhere, and I don't want this to go through luggage. It's got to be a carry-on, and uh, I, I want it with me all the time. It's something very important. And so, uh, I'm going to be traveling soon, and I had to make sure that, uh, especially for the domestic tickets in America, I had to make sure that, uh, that
that this would count as a personal item, and, and it should. And, uh, and sometimes we can put things in it while we travel. And if you're looking to, um, if you're wondering like who, who is a monk who follows a rule, if you see them like on a bus, uh, in Thailand, a, a lot of people will travel with their bowl. A lot of monks will travel with their bowl regardless of how they follow the rules. But in Myanmar, in Myanmar, uh, if you see someone traveling with their bowl, uh, yeah, that's, that's a good indicator that they might be following the rules. And, uh, but it might be in their bag as well. Uh, recently, I saw a monk who was traveling with his bowl and, uh, on the bus, and uh, he had uh, bus coupons, just like I do. And, uh, and, and so it was, it was very nice. It's very inspiring when you see a, bus, uh, when you see a monk traveling uh, with his bowl, and uh, that's like the main thing he's carrying, and he's very careful with the bowl because it's, it's very important and it's very central to the way a monk lives his life and his livelihood. And uh, without this, we can't go for alms, and there's uh, so much to this. So I think I've covered just about everything that there is about a bowl, how it's black, what it's made out of, the different materials, the rules, uh, how we set it down. We can't open the doors without, uh, with, uh, without it around our shoulder. Uh, if it's in our hand, we can't do that. Um, we also talked about how a monk can uh, go begging for uh, kuti supplies for building his own kuti without an offer. Uh, and if he breaks that, this is a Sangadi Sesa rule. It's a heavy, heavy class rule. And, uh, but that's, that's one, of the way that, one of the ways that he is able to beg for things without an invitation from, from people in the village. And also, uh, uh, we also talked about invitations also because it's, it's part of it's part of the, the bowl is actually to, to collect things without invitations. And so um, it's important to know like, uh, about invitations. And also a monk, if his bowl is broken, he can ask anyone uh, for uh, a replacement bowl. We talked about the blackening, the, uh, the way it is, and the oil, the special oil, how to cook it down, how to bake it. And... Uh, and that's the story about the lady <laughs> who asked me why I was going for alms in the hurricane. And um, yeah, so the bowl is very important and also for travel, uh, the monks, uh, it's best if the monk travels with the bowl uh, on his person uh, so that uh, he knows where it is all the time and so it doesn't get lost or stolen so he doesn't have to uh, use that uh, um, allowance to get another bowl. You know, it's like insurance, you know, if you, if you use, unless you're a crook and you collect on insurance, you, you lose, right? So, uh, uh, usually you, you, you lose. You might win, but uh, normally uh, if you're honest and you, and you have to use insurance, for, for instance, like health insurance or car insurance, you know, you could be in a car accident, get your car stolen. It's not a pleasant experience. And so you want to uh, prevent any of those things from happening. You know, we have allowances, which is sort of like insurance, but when you make a claim on insurance, it means you incorporated a big loss. And so that's, that's, no, that's no good. And so we don't, we don't want anything to happen to our bowl, and we, uh, so we should take uh, very good care of it. And, and that's why we have so many rules about uh, making sure that the, the, the bowl is well cared for. We also have rules about keeping it too long in the sun and how it should be stored and... Um, where you can put the bowl, can, you can't put it on your, on your lap, you can't, uh, can't put it on a dirty ground as well, and you should have a bowl ring and uh, some type of stand for it, some type of proper place for it. And if you don't have that, then uh, there's other ways to, to store your bowl. But we always want to protect our bowl, and when we travel, we also want to make sure our bowl is with us. We wouldn't want it checked in with luggage because uh, luggage disappears and it gets thrown around. So uh, that's my, my talk. I haven't talked much about the, the vinya, the rules of the monk, and uh, the monk life. 
And I hope that this is somewhat interesting uh, for you to understand uh, more about the bowls. Uh, I don't think uh, I don't think uh, Sri Lanka makes any bowls. Myanmar makes their own bowls now. Uh, it's fairly recent that they did that. In, in my time, when bowls, stainless steel bowls, were difficult uh, to get, um, that's because they were they were brought in from Thailand. Uh, now they make them. They have they have enough monks so that there's actually business opportunity to to um, to do that. But uh, still, most of the bowls come from from Thailand. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, so I hope this is uh, very useful for you. If you're a monk, you probably know all these rules. Maybe some of the rules might be new for you. If you're a layperson, uh, this might be interesting for you. Uh, if you want to ordain and you want to become a monk, or uh, if you're just interested in what the, the monk life is about, if you have uh, many contact with, with the monks, it should be uh, hopefully interesting for you. But I hope for, if you're a monk, and maybe I mentioned a rule you don't know, I hope that that can help you. And if you're a layperson and you want to become a monk, oh, I hope that this can inspire you to become a monk in the future so that you can practice uh, peacefully and diligently so that you can attain Nibbana safely and quickly, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.